Let's talk about Ireland before we get on to Leinster and Twickenham and Grand Slams and all the rest of it. Are you sick of winning becoming routine for Ireland? No, it's brilliant. <laughs> um, you know, I think Ireland have been playing so well for the last year and a half since that summer tour to New Zealand and obviously the disappointment of that one game was it a bad performance no it was you know a d defensive lapse that let New Zealand in it was a bounce of a ball a try held up they were still playing well and they just continued that form into this like three bonus point wins and you know again increasing depth within the squad so it's bloody brilliant. It is. And I suppose the thing is now it's such a big shock if Ireland were to lose. Uh, heaven forbid, I've just said it, you know, one of the last two games in the championship. And uh, we're in that position where Ireland losing now is big news. Yeah, and I think um, for me, the overall headline outside of Ireland has been, um, like, I, I think a lot of the quality from the other oppositions has been really poor. Um, you think back, it doesn't feel that long ago that Wales won the championship. England had a 19-game win streak under Eddie Jones. Uh, it's a very different... Obviously, France just haven't turned up yet. Um, so... On that, and then from an Irish point of view, just as sort of Fiona touched on there, albeit that the, the New Zealand result was um, shattering, it, it feels like you look at them and they just lost one game of rugby and it's still been a sort of multi-year, not upward trajectory, but uh, they don't look like they've, um, like they've skipped a beat, really. And what's changed? I mean, they are reigning slam champions. There's still two tough games to come. But, I mean, what's changed? What's uh, improved? We're always looking for evolution and marginal gains and all the rest of it. Have you seen much of that this year? Um, like I don't think a huge amount has changed. I just think they're adding small layers and their accuracy in how they're playing this year on both sides of the ball has been absolutely excellent. Um, you know, they've only... Uh, what is it, one, two, pen, two tries and a penalty try that they've conceded. And then on the attack, like when they're in their full flow, mm. they're just a joy to watch. And, you know, that short passing game that they have, that entices the defence in. They have the rooks. Um, they commit loads of defenders as well. That allows them to play on front football. They have really quick rook ball and they go again with those short passes or, and then the option to go wide when it is on. OK, well, translate some of this for us. So uh, we know that the, they have this kind of very short passing game, which obviously keeps defences guessing and takes, I suppose, I don't know. I mean, like, it's, it, it, it's short passing, so it's very hard to fix the attacking line, isn't it? I mean, but, like, is there any philosophy behind it or is it just kind of naturally evolved? I think a lot of teams at the minute are playing in defence with a lot of line speed. And when you're trying to bring line speed, big loopy passes are the defender's friend. And that's one thing, and Ireland did struggle at times against Wales because Wales weren't as aggressive in defence. That's the team that, that brought the blitz defence to the Six Nations in the noughties through Sean Edwards. Um, and New Zealand, again, in the World Cup, they didn't, they didn't really come and get Ireland with that line speed. They went a bit more sad Sideways, but the kind of the the idea is that that you know if you stand narrow and flat but control your feet, you're inviting the defence to come right onto you. You're inviting them to shoot, to shoot, but the players are very disciplined. They stand flat but they hold their feet and they they give themselves time to play. And what you get is maybe one player jumping to try and solve a problem by himself, and the next player isn't on the same page. So you're, Ireland are constantly asking questions of defences. I think that's one thing thing they're doing better than any team in the world, without a doubt. They're asking uh, questions of defences and if you do that consistently for 80 minutes or even like we saw in the Wales game, not consistently for 80 minutes, but if you keep doing it, like defences get it wrong eventually. Yeah. Is, is the, the, the man in possession has a number of options is really the key that's, to it too, isn't that's it? That's it, and they're all on. Like I suppose in that Wales game at the start, they always they tried to go out the back door a little bit too much, as opposed to hit that front line, those big ball carriers. But then the skill set of all of the Irish players to be able to play ball flat on the gain line with all those options available is what's given them the options and asking the defence questions. Okay, so you're going to enjoy the week leading up to this, and we we'll just, you know, we'll just enjoy it while it lasts, really, isn't it? I, I do think there is a bit of that. It doesn't feel that, that long ago we were celebrating that when we laughed about it before. A triple crown used to be a big thing, yeah. And now, if you look at uh, the twenties and and the seniors, um, I do think we should uh, try not to be arrogant about it, but I think we should try be trying to enjoy it. Yep, absolutely.